Tammy and Chris. Ugh, let me fix this with a real southern woman. Um, I let Chris be in on the thing tonight because we put our mobile home from Pensacola up for sale and we're getting so many personal messages uh, asking, is this your mobile home? And is this the mobile home that y'all stay in in Pensacola going up for sale? And I'm having to say yes. So I wanted you guys to know real quick um, before we start our study that yes, we have made the decision to sell our mobile home in Pensacola. I know our neighbors will be sad about that. And I haven't really broke the news to them either. Um, but we plan to uh, go towards St. Mary, anywhere around St. Mary area and purchase a home there so that we can be closer to the kids when they're in college. I just don't want to keep this house, and Chris don't either, um, and have the mobile home too. And we didn't want them to have to drive eight or nine hours when they get a spring break or a fall break or a Christmas break to see their mom and daddy. Um, so, I mean, the main thing for us, the whole reason in, in retiring down there is just because we want to retire somewhere that's a little warmer and we want to retire somewhere where we can fish. And so that was um, the point in that. So anyway, uh, we will be going uh, to St. Mary area, either St. Mary's or Kingsland, was it? Was that the area next to it? Kingsland or uh, Wood, what was the other town name? Woodbine. Woodbine. Uh, Melissa, if you're watching me, would you please quit sending me messages? I am on my <laughs> live video. I'm getting so many messages because we posted that mobile home. So y'all are going to hear a lot of beeping throughout this Bible study. I'm going to make it short tonight for that reason. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, hopefully... You know, when most people get the news, I won't continue to get so many um, interruptions while I'm videoing, uh, but I just wanted y'all to know that so that you would know why we're doing it, because it makes more sense for us to be able, you know, I want the, the kids to be able to hop in the car and come see me and be able to drive about four hours and not be so far away. Now, I know there's parents out there that send their kids out of state, but we're not, and so why not live the good life? be near the water, and uh, be in a central location for the kids. So that's what we plan to do. Um, I had come on earlier and told y'all I was having a root canal. And um, for those of y'all that went on that ride with me over to the Walmart, um, when I got there, he tried his best to do a root canal, but um, it didn't work out. So he actually pulled my tooth. So he, I was actually in his chair for three hours with my mouth open almost the whole time. And um, I was not able to go shopping like I thought I was going to do. And I couldn't even listen to my music because when he would talk to me, I had to be able to hear what he said. So um, after two hours of working on my tooth, um, we figured out that it would be more, it would be better if he just pulled it. So he pulled the tooth. Um, at least the bill, instead of being about $1,500, was $138. So that was a good thing. And I told him, I said, if I've got to lose a tooth, I lost a, the main molar on my left bottom when I was a teenager. I've never had a bridge or anything put back there. So I told him, I said, if I'm going to spend that kind of money, I don't want to spend money on the very back part of the top that I don't get a lot of chewing from. I would rather him do something nice down here to fix this so that I have a bridge or something that can chew on the left side. I've not been able to chew uh, on my left side since I was a teenager. So I'm excited about, he said he could probably fix that up. So anyway, I'm on pain medicines, but uh, it's time about to take another one. And I didn't want to take another one and still have a Bible study to do because I didn't want to be too goofy for y'all. I listened to the uh, scripture that we we're going to be reading about tonight. This is one of my favorite things. I just love the book of Genesis. I really do. And um, so you've got Isaac and Rebecca, and Isaac is about to die. 
and they favor both kid. You know, they both favor a kid that the other one don't. It's just funny, and um, so Jacob tricks his brother Esau out of the birthright. Then he turns around and tricks him out of the blessings from his daddy. And his daddy didn't really fall for it in the beginning. I mean, he kind of knew something was up. So he made Jacob do several things to prove to him that he was Esau because Jacob was pretending to be Esau. So um, anyway, um, he tricks his daddy. Jacob gets the blessings. Esau gets mad and threatens to kill him when his daddy dies. So um, his daddy sent him, Jacob, to his mother's brother, uh, I believe his name was Le Laban or Laban. Laban? Laban. Laban. Laban, and says, go find you a wife there. And so Jacob leaves, which was probably a good thing to get away from Esau, since Esau was mad at him, and he goes to find a wife. And it's just so funny to me. That God really does, you know, like people want to say in the world that karma is what, you know, people, what comes around goes around. It ain't got anything to do with karma. It's got to do with God. God does this in Genesis with Jacob. Jacob tricks his brother, then he tricks his daddy. So, is it Laban? Laban. Laban tricks Jacob. So, Jacob falls in love with, um, not Leah, but is it, it's not Rebecca, what's her name? Rachel. He falls in love with Rachel the first time he lays eyes on her because she's a beautiful girl. And so it's his mother's brother, that's the homeland he goes to. And um, that's the Laban. And it's his two girls that, um, Jacob has to work for, but Jacob really didn't even want the oldest one. He wanted the younger one because she was the pretty one, and he fell in love with her, and the dad says, work for me seven years, and then I'll let you have, um, I'm having a hard time, Chris, because I'm drugged up. Help me out a little bit. What's, there's Rachel. Rachel. Thank you very much. He's over here, click, click, clicking. Rachel. So he promises him Rachel. He worked seven years, y'all. Seven years. And then um, his her daddy says, okay, it's time for you to have Rachel. He tells him he's going to give him Rachel. It's not time. He sends Leah in. Um, he lays with Leah. He gets up the next morning and realizes that he has... He is with Leah and not Rachel. So he goes to Laban, 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 however you say it, Laban. I can't get nothing right. He goes to Laban and he says, why did you trick me and give me Leah instead of Rachel? And I think it's plum funny because he tricked his brother and he tricked his daddy. And ha, 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 God tricks him through Laban. 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 <laughs> I just can't do it, can I, Chris? Uh, so anyway, I just think that's funny. It just goes to show that it, it's just funny how things work out and God makes sure that uh, he knows now what it feels like to be tricked. So he tells him, hey, you have to stay a week with Leah and after you're with Leah a week, I'll give you Rachel, but you have to work another seven years so then he gets Rachel, and he works another seven years. But another thing that just kind of is funny, but it was in God's plan, y'all, uh, that all of this happened because he wanted him to have such a large family. He winds up with Leah and Rachel. Um, Leah has several sons for him, and uh, Rachel is barren. And they're jealous of one another because Leah knows that she's not favored. So she thanks the Lord for giving her these sons because she thinks her husband's going to love her now that she's given him these sons. And then Rachel gets mad and says, sleep with my handmaid so that I can give you a son. So he winds up sleeping with her handmaid 
having babies with her handmaid, turning back around, and then because Leah had quit having babies, she gave him her handmaid, sleeps with that handmaid, has a bunch of babies, and then God opens the womb of Rachel. She starts having babies. I mean, it's just crazy. So the whole thing is just kind of wild. And but he has a lot, lot, lot of kids. Okay, so that's the cool thing about it is how many kids uh, he got to have through these two women. And I really think that was part of God's plan too. So, um, and I sh probably shouldn't say this, but this is what I was thinking. You know, um, Rebecca tricks her husband Isaac by letting her son, uh, by cooking the son, her son this venison so that he can go in and get the blessing. And I was thinking, here's a woman that's being, you know, tricking her husband. It's pretty, I mean, she's lying. It's what she's doing. Uh, but God uses it anyway. And I was thinking, if I ever lie to my husband, maybe God could use it. <laughs> what do you think, Chris? Uh, he said, probably not. Aw. But anyway, I, just, I was just thinking that. When she was tricking her husband and doing all that, I thought, you know what? She's pretty doggone mean. And then God used it to his advantage. I wonder if I decided to be mean and trick Chris, would he use it to my advantage? But anyway, I know I shouldn't say that, but I was thinking that. Uh, that's the fun part about reading the Bible, and that's the fun part about looking at all these stories and seeing what happens and and how um, God does work stuff out. Now, um, so we go through all of this, and they're having all these children, and then Jacob asks um, Laban, did I get it right? Yeah. Yay! Then he, he says, Laban, I've blessed you enough. I've been with you long enough. I've lived with you and done all this stuff for you. Can't we leave? Now, I would leave and have my own place. And Laban, Laban, Laban. Laban says, okay. Um, and they make this deal with cattle. And then Jacob uh, tricks again and makes this the cattle drink in front of something he makes. He puts in front of the troughs and causes the cattle to be the kind of cattle he was supposed to have. And God blesses him. God blesses Jacob no matter what he does. Um, he's just favored by God, I guess. And because of the promises he made to Abraham. And it's coming true. So the next time we meet up, we're going to be talking about how did Jacob finally get away from Laban. We'll see. So we will... Uh, Read 31, 32 is about Jacob fearing Esau and Jacob meeting Esau. And um, so we will do the next three chapters, hopefully tomorrow, if I feel good. Um, I should, if I've got my pain medicine right. And so we got 31, 32, and 33. Yes, he gave me a Z-pack. He gave me a antibiotic. And he gave me ibuprofen and Tylenol to take together. So um, he loaded me up with medications, and I was glad. So I should heal pretty quick, I hope. So anyway, if you're curious and you want to buy our mobile home in Pensacola, send us a message. Um, if, if you're just wondering why in the world we're doing it, because we love it so much. Yes, we love it so much. We absolutely love it but not more than we love being around our children. Um, and so and I know that it won't be long and we won't have them. And that's all the more reason, in my opinion, for us to go to St. Mary's because it is three hours and 45 minutes from Macon and it's three hours and 45 minutes from Augusta. And if the girls want to get the car and come and see us, they can do that. And I want them to be able to do that for their birthday or for a break or for the holidays etc. Plus, they absolutely hate the sand and the beach, and uh, I know they're not going to drive eight hours to come see mom and daddy. I just know they won't, and I'm not going to put them on an airplane and fly them down there on, to that little airport neither. So, um, that's our plan. If it's in God's plan, we'll sell the trailer, and then when Amy graduates, we'll sell this house, and on to St. Mary's we'll go. I'll still be a Georgia girl. Um, I 
I'd love to get, we're, we're probably going to get a home um, if we go to St. Mary's. Uh, I mean, me and Chris are praying, you know, that God's hand is in it and that the trailer will sell and that um, when the time comes for us to find a place, um, we'll be able to find a place in St. Mary's. We will be able to buy in St. Mary's before we sell this home. We should be able to. Um, but we want to take our time and make sure we find the right home. And I've, we've got to find a home that doesn't have a galley kitchen, that has a, a kitchen that's open enough to walk around in in, in, in video because um, we plan to continue Collar Valley Cooks as well. So I hope y'all have enjoyed tonight's Bible study, an informative video. Um, and I am going to try to, I promise, finally, uh, I should, be able to try to get that GoPro out because I did do some filming on it and see what's going on with that view-wise so that I can get some stuff together for y'all. But I've talked long enough. My jaws are starting to get sore. And um, y'all know that's really hard on me because I love to talk. But he really did have my mouth open for three hours. When he got finished, that it took him an hour to get that tooth out. He had to cut it in half and put the outside came off. But then he had to cut the other part of it in half again and pull it out in sections because my teeth are really hard to pull. So anyway, it t he had to dead me four times, but that's a redhead for you. Redheads have to be deadened more. Y'all have a good night. We'll say our prayers and hopefully we'll get to see you tomorrow. As long as I'm doing well, I will be on here tomorrow for you. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much. We thank you. Um, Mostly today, I thank you for that dentist. I was in that chair for a long time, and you know as well as I know that I prayed while I was in his chair, and I thank you so much for me to be able to live in a time that there is a dentist, and there is pain medicine, and they, that he could deaden my mouth, and I praised you for that, because I can't imagine um, living in a time when those things were not available and them having to take out that tooth. It would have just been unbelievable. So anyway, we thank you for that. We thank you for the United States. We thank you for um, our government. We thank you for our health systems. Uh, too many people want to trash it, but I have to say I've been through a lot, and I'm very thankful for all of it, um, for I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the health systems that we are have available to us. Um, would you please be with us as we go throughout the next couple of days? Um, be with us throughout the sale of this home um, in Pensacola and your plans that you have for us. Be with everyone that took the time out to listen to your word and read your word today. Uh, bless those who are listening in tonight. Um, may you keep us safe and um, from sin. Um, help us not live all through our flesh, but also through your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your wisdom and your salvation. In Christ's name we pray always. Amen. Y'all have a good night, and we love you. See you later, alligators. Bye.